I've been up here training and living in Flagstaff at 7,000 feet for nearly a month now, living and training alongside literal Olympians, and it's genuinely changed my life in more ways than one. So I'm sat here packing up all my stuff, getting ready to go home for some much needed oxygen. I'm gonna tell you all about what those changes are and how I'm gonna be going home a different athlete and person than I was when I arrived. I'm gonna talk about the highs and the lows of this altitude training camp. I'm six weeks in from quitting my job to go all in on this Olympic dream, and a lot has happened since then. But first up, let's rewind to exactly a year ago because comparing January 2022 with the January I just had on this training camp really shows what an amazing opportunity this has been for me. So rewinding then to January 2022, Philly, I was working full time, nine to five or nine to six most days. I would go into the office twice a week in London. So I was working as a civil servant, going into the offices in Westminster, and I would just fit my training in around that. If it was a session day or a day that I had, I don't know, eight to 10 miles, I'd have to get up at sort of five, six in the morning and then get myself off to work. Some days I'd have a double when I got home or a gym session. And you get back from London having worked in an office all day, it's not really the first thing you want to do so i try my best but nine times out of ten the gym or a double run would be the first thing to be cut from my schedule because sometimes it actually wouldn't be sensible to push through and get that done i feel like i was tired most of the time don't get me wrong like i was enjoying myself i was back in a really good place with my running really good relationship with my coach who is still my coach now helen but she lived at the other end of the country and i was down in reading so she coached me at a distance and it worked but my god it's nice seeing her every day out here i was also training for my first marathon so i was somehow managing to fit in more miles than i'd ever done in a week whilst working full time and renovating our first home i genuinely don't know how we did that pretty crazy that it's only been one year of youtube as well because january 2022 was when i started my youtube channel which is kind of hard to get my head around. I can't believe that a whole year has gone by, but at the same time, it feels like I've been making videos forever. I just feel so comfortable doing it. I love making these videos. The community that is just sat there waiting for you on YouTube in terms of other content creators and people that watch your videos, just lovely supportive people is something that everyone needs in their life. It's amazing. I feel very, very lucky. So comparing that January to this January, which has been almost entirely spent here in Flagstaff, flew out here on the 3rd of Jan and it's now the 1st of February. That's just nuts. I've had a few people ask me why, like what is the benefit of coming out on a training camp when you're part of a professional team already, you've got that kind of setup back home. Why do we all need to travel away for a month and spend time away from home training? For starters, we're at altitude, which has a massive performance benefit for endurance athletes. And if you live and train at altitude for two to three weeks plus, your body adapts to having less oxygen, produce more red blood cells in order to recover quicker, which means then when you come back down to sea level, you have this added layer, if you like, of fitness that results in some fast times and a pretty solid base to start your racing season on. And I am no scientist, so that is my understanding of the benefits of altitude training. I'm something of a scientist myself. If you are a scientist, please let me know in the comments section below a more detailed and thorough explanation as to why the hell I've been here for the last month. <laughs> but on top of that, coming out here, spending time together as a team and training together, we're all living in one house under one roof for starters. There's nine of us out here. Not only do you get to bond with your teammates, you get to see how 
how other people live and what their kind of routines are. I've picked up some really healthy and helpful habits from my teammates' routines, which I think are gonna be game changers if I can successfully take them home with me and implement them into my at-home training and living routine. So I'll get into that a little bit more later, but you can't really compare. The only similarity I would say to this month of training and January last year is that I'm running <laughs> and I'm doing the same sport. But the consistency in going to the gym, getting my doubles done, eating a really healthy, balanced, delicious diet, getting so much sleep and just having a really good time. I'm out here doing what I love. I feel so, so privileged and I'm able to earn money and work my work around that. I'm coaching, I'm filming videos and I can slot that in around training and really make running the priority. I feel like I'm constantly pinching myself, but it's true. I'm trying to explain like what the benefits of going on a training camp are aside from like you go to altitude and you get fitter. Yeah. Like it's it's like so much more than that. Yeah. It's like mentally a, it's a different just it's, yeah. like training I aspect. Feel like, like it puts you in like a bit more of a focus. Like, yeah. No distractions. You're in an environment where everybody's training and I know we normally are, but but yeah, you've got no distractions from home. Like you're you're here to train kind of bond as a team as well yeah yeah go. people could train with like the girls from boston and like see what they are doing and meeting new people it's sometimes you can get a bit like monotonous training at, the same at home place yes and, i like agree. yeah doing the same runs and change of scenery change the whole pizzas to yourself? <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, we didn't realize they were gonna be this big. <laughs> Genuinely, what would you say your highlight and low light of camp would be? I don't think I've ever, okay, not ever, but I haven't been laughing so loudly. Grand Canyon was one. Yeah. Grand Canyon? Yeah. Good sessions. Yeah, I feel like you're in a different place. Yeah. Oh, how you are. Compared to four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I think if you would have said the session I've done beforehand, I wouldn't have even believed you. Like I said, nah. Ask me in two months and I can maybe do that. Leg one of the journey complete. We are in Phoenix. We are 150 miles closer to home. Probably not even because we might have gone in the wrong direction. Well, it's 10.30 and it's time to sleep because we are waking up in... Four hours? Five hours. Waking up at half three to get our flight. Good night. We probably shouldn't hit the lens like that. Journey home, but first bagel with honey and walnut cream cheese spread. God bless America. And oh no, walkers, here she two. comes. It's coming. So as I was saying, obviously my absolute highlight of camp was just sharing a bedroom with Yip Bastenberg. You can't find a better roommate. A very accommodating bed sharer. Highly recommend. Even though I got some oatmeal. Ready for the worst part of a training camp. Going home. No, in all seriousness though, I'd probably share the highlight that you said. The birthday saddle. As training aside, 
That would be my highlight. So for context, it wasn't Helen's birthday, but it was her birthday a couple days before we left. Yeah. So we asked at Texas Roadhouse last week if they do anything for birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking maybe they'll have a cheesecake or something. Oh yes ma'am, we have the birthday saddle. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, uh, okay. So we just said, yeah, sure, not knowing what that was. And then we saw them bring the birthday saddle over to another table. Yeah, we were just dying with laughter the whole meal. Mainly the funny bit was anticipating the birthday saddle. And then they brought yeah, the birthday saddle over. like 15 minutes before the birthday saddle came out. And then we're literally halfway through our meal and they bring the birthday saddle over and Helen's like, it's not my birthday. It's it's actually, not my birthday. It's actually happening. It was actually that funny. Yeah, it was quite it's awkward actually. Yeah. But anyway, if you don't know what the birthday saddle is, just look it up on YouTube, Texas Roadhouse. So see the link below. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my gosh, have you been to the Olympics? I have been to these. I have been tattooed. <laughs> the warmest and most stuffy airport that there is. Halfway, halfway through the travel? Yeah, I'd say so. Just had a chicken burrito, filled a hole, and now I'm on my way to get a Jamba Juice, because you can't get those in the UK and they're really good. So I've just walked all the way to the other end of the airport and I'm walking back. We are on a mission, people, for a smoothie. I'm going insane, it's a crazy day. I'm going insane, walking around JFK. <laughs> yep, I literally walked past it. Can I get a strawberries wild, please, in medium? Yes, that's it, thanks. Ah, uh, yeah, Susan. Susan orders a good smoothie. You should always change your name if you order a drink and they ask for your name, because it's funny. And then you have to try and remember the name that you put. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Susan. I crack myself up sometimes. <laughs> so, where was I? Highs and lows of the camp. I mean, apart from the birthday saddle, as Yip said, that was hilarious and definitely one of the highs in terms of I can't remember the last time I cried from laughter like that. But in terms of the running out there, I'd say it's quite a few highs. Like I just really enjoyed the running. Don't get me wrong, there were lows as well, but I'd say the number one spot for the high has got to be a toss up between my longest long run since running the marathon. So longest run since 26.2, which was 17 miles. So that was just over a week ago. And there's a few sessions as well. One of the sessions that was really good fun was teaming up with Team New Balance Boston. Me and Izzy were in there and a couple of other really sick pro runners. Molly Seidel jumped in with us for that session. I mean, I say I ran with Molly Seidel, I mean, we started together and I watched her run off into the distance <laughs> as she ran just a little bit faster than me, just a little bit. We had two by two mile, two by one mile. And it was around the two by two mile, just me and Izzy because it was our first proper session. So we sort of held back and the Boston girls ran a little bit faster. And then the two by one mile, we jumped in with them and I was very outside of my comfort zone, but really pleased to run a 507 hanging with the middle distance girls. I mean, they were probably chilling. I was absolutely not chilling. I was looking at coach like, <laughs> can you help me? But that was really fun. Big confidence boost. And then we have the lows. I mean, you've already seen one of them. That eight by a K session that I did with the GoPro head mount on was a real low point. I think it came in the middle of a few days that was like a chunk of a low point. The session obviously was probably the height of it. The height of the low, the low of the low. It was really hard. A couple days after that, I think just the runs were tough. And I've heard this before, that you get to altitude, you have a few days that are pretty good. Then you feel like absolute ass for at least a week. And then you feel all right again. And I felt great by the end of camp, but there were a couple of runs after that session that I just got dropped and we were running easy. Like we were jogging and I was off the back jogging, just alone with my thoughts, the wind and the cold and the cold and the wind. So yeah, that was tough, but they make you tougher. Those runs make you tougher. I remember running up Lake Mary Road 
There was five of us that set off. It was the coldest day. I think it was minus one Fahrenheit, which, if I'm not mistaken, is something ridiculous, like minus 13 Celsius. Cold. After a mile, I was staring at the four of them in the distance. So it's tough, sometimes you have to do that, but I'd rather drop off the back, feel rubbish, but run slower so that at least I don't feel rubbish the next day and the next day after that, because if you feel rubbish, you gotta listen to your body sometimes and drop off or cut the run short. And that's what I did on that day. They ended up doing eight miles. I was meant to do eight miles, but I stopped at four, jumped in the car with Helen, turned the heated seat on, so satisfying, and didn't finish the run which was a difficult decision to make. But at the end of the day, it's four miles in the grand scheme of a week. Doing that four miles isn't gonna make a difference or it would make a difference in the negative way and make me feel bad for the next session. And then that would then affect more days than it needs to. So sometimes you just gotta know when to can it. But I would definitely say more highs than lows, would do it all over again if I got the opportunity and don't think I'd do anything differently. Although maybe would question the GoPro head mount session just from knowing how bad it was. <laughs> Welcome on board. Ready to go for a run? Yes. <laughs> well, look who it is. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> You feel the oxygen? Yes. Breathe it. So good. <laughs> wow, muscles. Muscles. Yeah. It's 20 to 7, which means that it's actually 20 to midnight. I'm gonna power through an entire day now. Oh, yes, I have missed you. He missed me. <laughs> <laughs> no paps. Ah, oh, so nice to be able to breathe. That sweet, sweet oxygen. My heart rate is about 10 to 15 beats per minute lower than it has been for all my easy runs and Flagstar, if not more. Some of them have got pretty high. Oxygen is so underrated. Feels good. That was a very enjoyable run at sea level. A little bit muddy, but really nice to be able to breathe without difficulty and just get the legs rolling after the travel. Next up, I'm gonna tell you about what has actually changed me because of this training camp. But first, I need to get out of these muddy running clothes. So what about those changes that I mentioned right at the start of this video? How am I actually going home a different athlete and a different person? It's gonna sound ridiculous, but they are the little things. And I've spoken about this so many times, but it's practicing what I preach and seeing how really successful athletes around me have implemented those things day after day, week after week, and put them in consistently and seen results because of the little things. So actually, the little things really are the little things at all, they're the big things. And I've seen how they can really make a difference. So what am I going on about? Sleep is the biggest one. I always talk about getting eight hours sleep every night. How often do I actually get eight hours sleep? I try, I endeavor to get eight hours sleep, but I need to be a lot better. Every night, pretty much, for the first two weeks on camp, I would be the last person sat in the living room working away on my laptop and people would slowly leave from about 9 p.m. onwards, much earlier than I did, and they'd be asleep before me as well. And I started to realize that's gonna have an impact on my training. So sleep revolutionized on camp. Most nights, literally nine out of 10, I got minimum eight hours sleep, sometimes nine, and I felt unbelievable for it. So I'm taking that practice home with me and I'm gonna stick to it. And if I don't, you guys can pull me up on it. If I talk about not getting enough sleep, please tell me off. Another one, massage. Consistently getting a massage once a week and giving myself a massage, i.e. getting the foam roller out. I honestly have not used my foam roller 
in over a year. Like, it's dusty. I've probably used it maybe once, but I'm gonna get that thing out once a week minimum, as well as having a massage. And that's not enough. I know people that were doing it every day, but I'm gonna be realistic with it. Slowly, slowly. If you throw yourself all in, it's not gonna be sustainable, but I am gonna do it. And another thing that I really want to invest in that I worked on whilst on camp and before a little bit, but I really invested in it on camp is the mental side of running. I've been seeing a sports psychologist for a while. I found it really beneficial. It's very eye-opening experience. It's things like preparing what you want the outcome for a session to be, visualizing that rather than just turning up and hoping for the best, seeing what happens. Rather than just focusing on pace because some days that's not gonna happen, it's focusing on other process goals that you can control. So having really good form, looking and feeling relaxed, having a really good warm up routine, focusing on doing all your drills, focusing on recovery, bringing your shake with you. And, and these are all practical things. These aren't psychological things, but you have to actively think about them, which is your mental game, in order to follow them through. So I would literally just write a list the night before a run or a workout of the things I wanted to focus on and what I wanted to achieve in that session or run. And it made what I was doing so much more purposeful and directed than just going through the motions kind of unconsciously. They might sound like little things, but they're the little things that the really big, really talented and successful athletes are doing. There is no special secret practice that the elites and the Olympians are doing that you guys can't do. So for the people out there that think there is, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but it's these little things that really are the big things, but doing them every day and making them part of your habits that is gonna elevate you to the next level. And with that, it's time for me to go and get ready for bed. Just kidding. It's actually still light outside, but I will get an early night. Love the grind.